yeah, we just had a review then, and um, obviously both positive and negative. Um, first quarters is obviously an issue which we are trying to address at the moment, but um, but yeah, that's pretty much what the game came down to. The first quarter to kick um, seven goals to zero is not great, and um, it's probably come down to our defensive stuff and just our outside method and um, how we can change that to. Um, Stem the flow of goals, I suppose. So you're more, sorry, keeping level with them for almost for the last three quarters. Is that sort of overshadowed by the first quarter? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, looking at the game, we have a, we had a number of positives in the th last three quarters, but um, to play like we did in the first quarter, um, it's obviously yeah really disappointing to to stay with them for three quarters, and they're such a great team, and um, to have that blowout in the first quarter. It's, kind of like soccer where they kick a goal in the first couple of minutes and it's pretty much game over so um, that's probably what the game came down to in the end. Chris, what are you being directed to do if a, if a team starts a run of consecutive goals? Is there a, a message that's been given to the players as to what you should do to stop those quick blowout runs? Yeah, there's obviously a, a process in place. Obviously, numbers behind the ball is obviously an option that the, the coaches throw up. Um, but it just comes down to the, the midfield and, and everyone just knuckling down and shutting down their opponent and um, we just need a mentality where if I'm not going to get in the touch, my opponent can't get a touch either. So um, that's what we've, we've spoken about um, in length in the review and um, we just need to go into games um, thinking if the game's at 0-0 coming to quarter time, we'd, that's something we'd be happy with. Um, and we know we've got the legs to run out games pretty well. Um, but that's just a big focus for us this week, um, that we can't let that happen again. So the starts continue to be a problem. Is it more like structure technique or is it an attitude thing? Um, it's probably a little bit of both. Um, obviously, structures help in, in, a, in a little way, but it's probably more attitude, more method around the ball. Um, just guys want to do everything to stop a goal, one goal, um, and that's probably what it comes down to: attitude, to tackle, chase, chase and tackle. Sorry, and um, just shut down the opponent. For, for fans, it's so frustrating. It looks almost like you can't get kicked into gear until you're seven goals down, and suddenly, like, okay, let's start playing now. Yeah, well, um, it's obviously frustrating for us as well, as much as them. Um, it's not something that we're proud of, and. We're doing everything trying to change that around. Um, we're trying to change up structures, uh, things we do at training, before games. We're trying everything that we can to change that and that's um, at the top of our priority list for things to change and um, we're doing everything we can to change that. Just on that, you've played footy for a long time, been at this club for a while. Is it, is it pre-game, can you notice anything different that might have been there in the past in terms of lack of energy or lack of focus or people doing their own thing? Or has anything changed? Uh, nothing's really changed. Um, Pre-game warm-ups has always been, been very good. The guys are, have been upbeat for the whole year, so um, it just co comes down to in-game, um, little lapses of concentration um, and things like that just build up and um, we're just trying to stamp that out um, as quick as we can. How big is this game this weekend now, that going into the bye, that you're great just losing a and go at 6-4? Yeah, it's obviously um, a huge week for the club to go into 6-4, probably last year. Um, if you would have said that would be 6-4 leading into the break, we'd be um, very happy with that. But now we're in the situation where we're 5-4 and, and we're probably a little bit disappointed. Um, we probably should be yeah a few more wins on top of that. But um, at the moment, we just want to um, break this losing streak. And it's, it's a very important game um, for the club and for the players to build that little bit more, more momentum leading into the second part of the season. Justin, beyond um, the level of competition rising as the season's fell on, what do you think has changed between the Port Adelaide that won 5-0 and the Port Adelaide that's at 0-4? Um, it's probably a little bit too hard to put um, something on one thing, but um, look, we've just played four quality teams. Um, all the teams that we played are pushing for that top eight. and. We're just um, trying to put a few more for forward steps into the into the process, and um, we're just all about improving. And um, we're, we're learning a lot over the last month, um, playing those better teams, and 
um, trying to get a gauge for where we're at um, as a group and look, we're still building, we think, we think we're still taking steps forward to getting to where we want to be but um, we just need to keep believing in the process of what we're about and, and hopefully that can stem on to the next few games. You've had to deal with the burden of playing as a key forward, what advice or what approach do you think should happen with John Butcher now? Oh look, John's an attribute for the team that um, we want him in the team, that's for sure. Um, speaking to, if you speak to me and Schulte, um, it takes a lot of pressure off us in the forward line. Um, we have real confidence in um, what John's about and how good he can be. And um, Obviously he made a few mistakes in the game, but um, he's been out of the game for probably 10 months now. And First game back, he's always going to have a few problems, but um, Look, he's at least he's getting opportunities, having shots at goal. He's he's chasing, chasing, he's tackling, and that's what we want from him. And um, every player out there's got that much confidence in in him and what he's about. And he'll play this week for sure. So um, we just want him at the best he can be. And we'll. Probably should remain his kicking. Yep. How's the approach on that going to be now with him? Look, we've got a, a good. Development group. Um, he does a lot of work with with guys like Daniel Healy, um, our full line coach Gary Hocking. Um, he does as much work as anybody else with his kicking and and things like that. So um, look, as soon as he builds a little bit of confidence in his kick and and his body, um, look, the goals will come from that. He's shown that um, before playing in the AFL level. So there's no doubt that that will come back in his game. You've dealt with that. You remember that you've had a lot of limelight on you. you had a big shot. To to win a game that yep. didn't happen. How did you approach the week after? Oh, I know it's cliche, but you just got to get back on the horse. You got to get out, kick a few footies around, um, and you still get a lot of confidence from your players, your peers. Um, they're always there to back you up, and you just need to go back to the basics, um, your routine, things like that, um, which help you um, in every period aspect of your game. Um, you just got to go back to that, um, talk to your coaches, and talk about. Talk about the game, talk about your mistakes, and that's how you, you um, improve on that. After your first stunning three weeks, how have you dealt with the last six weeks? How have gone? Um, it's obviously been um, a little bit tougher than probably early on, but um, I've tried to obviously work through that, as I said with John and what he's trying to do. Um, obviously, played okay on the weekend and take a lot of confidence out of what role I played on the weekend for the team. and. Um, Obviously, you always want to play better than you than what you have previously. So um, I'm just trying to build back to that. Um, I set a high standard at the start of the year, and I just want to get back to where where I was before. Heading up to Darwin this week, does that change the way that you guys deal with this week? Um, no, not really. I think um, in the past we probably had two games in a row up there, and we probably um, led into the game a little bit differently. But we'll head up there on Thursday and. Get a little bit acclimatised to the weather and, and train up there and get used to um, what what it's going to be up there. A little bit dewy and all things like that. But um, we've been up there for a few years now and we've gotten used to it. Um, and obviously, yeah, a big game for the club and and we want to come back um, refreshed and on, on the winners list for sure. Justin, is it asking too much of you now to play forward, sweeper, and defence and in run? Um, no, not at the moment. I think. Um, I want to play wherever, anywhere um, which will benefit the team and if that's in two, three, four different spots that's what I have to do and that's what I have to get my head around. Um, obviously I've played my best footy um, in the forward line but um, Ken's put it on me to um, get my head around playing different spots and um, I just want to do that for the team and if I have to sacrifice a little bit of that um, I'll do it for sure. Um, obviously it's, it's a tough spot, um, playing ruck and you obviously want to get pushed and, and a bit battered but um, you just got to cop it on the chin and, and do the best you can. Um, and obviously I'm in, in a position where I could probably um, use a few other attributes of my game to maybe help out the team a little bit more when I'm in those positions but um, look obviously you're going to cop a, a fair bit of, um, you're going to be a little bit more sore probably after the game than what you usually are. but. Um, you just got to cop that on chin and, and move forward. You're the away team this week, but do you feel at home up there? Do you feel like it's almost a, a home game? 
Yeah, um, absolutely. I think we've uh, um, obviously had a bit of experience up there in the conditions that probably present themselves. So we've got um, a good idea of what goes on and the process um, leading up to the game. So um, we'll feel confident going into the game. Um, and I think um, we're real confident in, in winning the game for sure. Justin, when the mid-season break happens for you, is it best for you guys to stay here and keep working through a lot of things or do you actually now need all of you get away from it? Um, well, I think it's a bit each their own of what, what they want to do. I'm sure the coaches and, and the fitness staff will give us time off to recuperate and um, depending on what the player wants to do, get away and refresh. And I'm definitely a guy who will get away and, and refresh the batteries and um, get away from footy for a little bit. But um, yeah, each their own. A lot of guys will stick around and, and do a little bit more training. but. Um, it's probably more of an individual thing. Kane Corns will uh, level Warren Trigger at the club games this weekend. Where's he rated among the greats for you? Um, he's obviously, yeah, he's up there. Um, to win the best and fairest, um, Premiership player, All Australian. Um, there's not too many players who can who have a, a list um, under their name. So he rates, yeah, very highly. Um, obviously, this club is prides himself on winning games like that for people like Kane, um, and it's, I'm sure it's a, it's a big game for him and his family. And to pass that that record um, will be a, a massive achievement for him. Um, and I'm sure the guys want to win for him and and be able to carry carry him off like we did earlier on in the year um, and come off him as a winner. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think um, obviously Treaders was a is a champion of the club and came up there pretty close to him, so um, it's a big achievement and, and we'll do everything we can to, to win the game for him. Justin, just on a bigger picture, the fans, with what they say from across the seats over the fences, is it getting better, getting worse? Do they understand what they're saying to the players and some of it is crossing the line? Um, obviously, I haven't really experienced um, anything like that um, racially or anything um, to that extent, so um, obviously it's still out there, and it's obviously unacceptable um, to have that in in the AFL or any sporting environment. And obviously that's what the players stand for, um, and it's just got to come down to something where it's just out of our game, and that's what the players believe in, and that's what obviously the majority of the supporters believe in as well. So um, that's what we stand for, and. Um, it's just got to be the sooner the better to, for that to be cut out of the game, um, the better the all sport all sport will be, I think.